to Jermaine on Natural. I am Jermaine Ryan and as today is August 31st, I wanted to make sure that I brought a new Black, Black history, history. A, piece a piece every, every month. month. This month I'm going to be talking about a company, a brand that has been around for 70 plus years. It feels like, it really does feel like forever. It's definitely been around longer than a lot of us two times. Uh, it is a company, a brand that has uh, uplifted the black community, encouraged the black community, uh, brought forward entrepreneurs and businesses and, you know, just everything that empowers our community. Who am I talking about? Bonner Brothers. Woof, woof, woof. Listen, the double cursive B is iconic. If you have never seen any Bronner Brothers products, then you have been living under a mountain, not just a rock, a whole mountain, like a whole mountain, unless you were born yesterday. So let's, let's go back. Let's, let's talk about, let's do an origin story. <laughs> let's, you know, Marvel Universe it. Let's, you know, Black Panther, let's, what let's. Now is go back. So this origin story is actually going to take it back, to, back, take us back to the 1930s. Let's, let's set the tone. Let's paint the picture. 1930s. So a few things were happening back then. One thing was that it was the end of the 31st president's Herbert Hoover's time in office. And now we are entering Franklin Delano Roosevelt or FDR. Do we know who he is? No, maybe not. If you don't know who Franklin Roosevelt is, then scour your home. Bring me my money. Yeah. Since we are in this random change <laughs> shortage and you might not have any change. Show me the money. <laughs> and if you find a dime, then you will know that you have been looking at the 32nd president of the United States. Where's my focus at? Where's my light? There we go. You have been looking at the 32nd, 32nd president of the United States for as long as you have been alive. This is Franklin Roosevelt or FDK, FDR, I'm sorry, FDR on the dime. So now that we know who the 32nd president of the United States is <laughs> and the piece of money that he's on, and I think one of the only presidents that ran or got three terms, yes, <laughs> three terms were a thing back then. He did it. It will be linked below. Google it. Another major event that was happening in the 1930s, you had the Great Depression, started in the, the mid to late 20s, but did roll over heavily into the 30s. So you had the Great Depression, you had with the entrance of Franklin Roosevelt, the entrance of several different acts that were written into law for the minorities of the country. So you had the Indian Recognition Act. And when I say, it says Indian, that's what it is. But currently, you know, we know that Indian are people from India, the West, <laughs> that's Asia. It's, it was made for Native American, the, the indigenous people. So it is called the Indian Registration Act, but it's actually for the Native Americans that were here in the the this country before it was the United States. Another thing that was prevalent and happening in the 1930s, you had the great migration of black people from the south moving to the north, cities like Detroit, um Chicago, Philadelphia, New York and also moving west to states like California and Washington state. Another thing that was happening at that time and kind of ties into Franklin Roosevelt and the Great Migration, well, what actually put him into office was the switch of black people being Republican to then turning Democratic, which is how he actually got, we put Franklin Roosevelt in office, okay? Because we switched parties at that time because he was doing things that were more beneficial for black people, also Native Americans as well, and other minorities in the country. Another thing that was happening in the 30s, you had the Harlem Renaissance. We all, I think, should be familiar with the Harlem Renaissance. Think Harlem Nights. I wouldn't tell you to kiss my ass too, but you probably can't find it, you blind. With Eddie Murphy and Richard Pryor. Man, you got to step out back. 
Hey, it was just a misunderstanding. Uh-uh. No, it ain't. That's to kind of give you a visual. Now, to give you um, a tone of the people that were, you know, famous, big names who were around back then was Dr. Mary McLeod Bethune, who was the founder of the National Council of Negro Women. Because it was Harlem, you know, people were, you know, the Great Migration happened, people were moving to the the, the North, and, you know, Harlem Nights was happening, and Harlem Rena or not Harlem Nights, <laughs> Harlem Renaissance was a thing, you know, the, the the tone was changing, the sound of change was changing of music. And, you know, jazz went to, you know, he still had jazz, but then it had that, you know, that swing to it, you know, think Charleston, Charleston, all about that Charleston. You know, that Harlem swing. <laughs> was the sound of music that was happening back then. Uh, Think the Cotton Club, Duke Ellington. Jelly Roll Martin, uh, Louis Armstrong, Adelaide Hall, Gladys, Gladys Bentley, Billie Holiday. Uh, did I say Louis Armstrong? Uh, Duke Ellington at this time also because of the Great Migration and black people definitely you know wanting more rights and better rights for themselves you had very 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 early stages of the civil rights movement beginning you know to form at that time other people that were very big at that time Josephine Baker Buddy Bradley Catherine Dunham and though he was just born in 1931 and had not yet become the icon and legend that he is known to be today you actually had uh, Alvin Ailey he was born in 1931 but you know iconic nonetheless. So that's the scene. Those were the people. Those were the things that were happening in the 1930s. So going back to our st story and what was also happening in 1930, you had Dr. Nathaniel H. Bronner Sr., who was at the time studying business at an HBCU. He was a Morehouse student. Well, somewhere in his, in his studies, you know, he saw something that kind of turned his mind a little bit and put him in a different mindset as to what he wanted to focus his career on and it pointed him in the direction of cosmetology and he then went to cosmetology school. He was then later joined by his brother in 1947, Arthur E. Bronner Sr. and their sister Emma. This was the foundation, the start of the Bronner Brothers trade show. This is this is the foundation. Once they formed it once they formed it. The trade show went on to be held at the Butler Street YMCA in Atlanta. Because it was just starting, there were 300 people there. There were 40 exhibitions and stylists. So modest beginnings, you know. They were just just you know hitting the pavement. Well, because they brought so many different people in and because it was something that the black community was already kind of pushing towards it was an industry that was building steam and that was growing think people like madam cj walker or annie turnbull malone the beauty industry and the you know, focus on black beauty, black hair, you know, black entrepreneurship was a building thing. Well, because they were doing this trade show and bringing so many people in, it grew. And what happens when you grow? <laughs> it became so much more than just hair. And as I've mentioned in another black history video about how our hair is so deeply tied to who we are as a people, they were giving that opportunity It's 8.30 in the morning, why? Are you riding around with your music that loud on your moped, sir? And move up, they did. They went from the YMCA to the Royal Peacock Social Club, who has seen acts the likes of B.B. King, The Four Tops, Gladys Knight. So it was a very notable social place. And Bronner Brothers was now there. Well, the industry was steadily growing and they had to move on up again. And this time they moved to the historical Auburn Ave Casino 
on Auburn Street or is known as Sweet Auburn. This street was the place to be at that time and it was noted by a president, I can't remember which thing that I read because I read a whole lot about them, um, but there was a president that did later note that this street, this place in Atlanta was the wealthiest black you know, area in the country, the place to be. So some of the more notable places, historical places that you would find on the street back then were several different churches. Martin Luther King spoke at the churches. You will also find the first black owned daily newspaper, the Atlanta Daily Word, which was founded in 1928, but spanned time. And it was there, this was the base of it. And to this day, you can actually still find the Atlanta Daily Word. It is online. I'm not sure if they still have a physical publication, but they are still very active, still have tons of speakers and articles and things like that. You can still find it. Another thing that was notable and historic about this area on Sweet Auburn Street was the Rucker Building. It was constructed by Henry A. Rucker, who at the time was a politician. It was constructed in 1904, but it was the first black owned business building. Also, what you'll find on the street to this day, like now you'll find is the Martin, the Dr. Martin Luther King. I'm sorry. Am I the only one that just, you have to say Martin Luther King. <laughs> I know I'm not the only one and I know he, listen, you can now today find the Dr. Martin Luther the King Jr national park there and because you know like with a lot of areas particularly the black ones you know just things happen and just you know we're torn down and so during a period of time the area did suffer a lot of vacancies a lot of blight well since you know that time has passed money has been put back into the his back into this historic area which it was if i remember correctly it was deemed historic somewhere in the 60s or the 70s i think i'll have that article linked down below and remember anything that i'm speaking about today will be linked down below so that you can read and research for yourself if you don't just want to take my word for it so now going down there in addition to seeing all these historic landmarks and signage and buildings and churches and things like that it is now a, a, a bit of a bustling area where you can now even in seeing all of these historical spots, grab a bite to eat. There are restaurants there, tons of restaurants, black owned restaurants in the area that you can now eat. So it is, it's a, it's a real historic, black historic attraction. Now that Bronner Brothers is on this prestigious street, which it being a, 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 a cultural mecca, you know, it's setting trends and the different fashions. Bronner Brothers is right there in the middle of it, just soaking it all in. And because of just location, 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 they were actually able to get Dr. Martin Luther the King as one of the speakers at one of the trade shows. They actually also had Jackie Robinson, rest in peace, and also rest in peace to Chadwick. So sad, just another king. The industry is still growing and more and more people are coming out with, with brands and more entrepreneurs and more shops and, you know, stylists and things like that. Well, as nice as the casino was, they needed to, they needed to, to move on up again. They then transitioned to the city auditorium. This was a good space, but they were still growing. So then they moved on to the Hyatt Regency Hotel where they did sign a long-term lease. So they were at the Hyatt Regency for 20 years. They were truly creating a space for entrepreneurs, for new stylists, um, and just a really safe space, a really positive space for uh, black men and women to either launch careers or to take off or display what they had. It was, you know, inspirational because you did have speakers like Martin Luther King and Jackie Robinson. It was educational, you know, we were, and this is in the 60s at this point. So now we're looking at the civil rights movement and they were just, they were right there in the middle of it. It became so much more than just hair. Well, the lease came to an end with the higher range of seat, and though it was great, they still needed <laughs> big. 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 From here, they then transitioned, and they are still currently at the Georgia World Congress Center, where they still, where they currently reside. Bronner Brothers is still a family-owned business. They now have 300 
around 300 employees and it is a multi-million dollar business. Now because they have been around for so long and they've done so much for the community, they've been featured in tons of magazines and on the news. Uh, BT has featured them, they've been in Essence, they've been in L, they've been in Black Enterprise, New York Times has done articles on them. The second generation is now spearheading Bronner Brothers, led by Bernard Bronner, who is the CEO and president, and James Bronner, who is director of the trade shows now. In addition, the products. The products are still on the market. Though I uh, do not use uh, grease, I... it doesn't smell bad, it smells like grease. There's something sweet in this that I can't make out. It might be the coconut oil and fragrance, but listen, I've had this for some several years now. Like, <laughs> I wanna say easily, this is back when I was getting my hair cut. I want to say that I had this at least five to six years and yet it's the green is still green. It's still clear. It's not melt like uh, uh, the nostalgia of the of that smell. So the trade show, you know, like I said, is it's 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 a whole thing now. It's a very, very big thing bringing in tens of thousands of people a year between vendors and people showing up that are guests and and entrepreneurs and and their reach as far as you know bringing in people to speak some to be noted you have a, a various amount of people from the love and hip-hop franchise cynthia bailey from real housewives uh, hairstylist, celebrity stylist Derek J, celebrity style, stylist Miss Lawrence. You have people like Kim Kimball, several of the Braxton speakers. Johnny Wright has been there, who is Michelle Obama's hairstylist. Michelle Obama has spoken at a Bronner Brothers convention. B, Queen B, the Beyonce. And it just sparked. Has also spoken at the Bronner Brothers show, Bow Wow, Kiki Palmer, just a ton of people. Rick Ross has been there. May, a lot of people may not know this, but Rick Ross actually has a beard line that is sold at Sally's, but he's been there also. You've had big and small companies that have come forth. Paul Mitchell has been a vendor there. It has always been a growing, living, evolving, force an entity in the black and beauty industries. Now, 2020, and we are still in a pandemic and because of the Bronner Brothers trade show brings so many people, they are not able to have it physically. But however, however, you can still attend as the show along with several other things this year. It is going to be a virtual show. So this is August 31st. The virtual show is gonna be September 27th and the 28th. So you can actually go to BronnerBrothers.com. You can register and sign up and see the virtual show. And it's pretty much gonna be everything that you would see in the live or if you were actually there in person. So they're gonna have um, entrepreneur business classes. They're gonna have classes on, you know, working with natural hair, cutting hair, coloring hair, uh, face, skin, makeup, you know, everything's. And we, and, and listen, we can't talk about Bronner Brothers and not mention the iconic, the legendary Eleganza Extravaganza. Hair shows, the hair challenges, the hair battles, like, I think that was a really big, you know, they, because they have been such a big force, you know, the black community know who they are, but I think just the creativity and the things that have come out of their hair shows have really made them the international show that they are. They are not just limited to Atlanta. They are known worldwide. I mean, cutting hair underwater. I remember one theme, it was futuristic and like everybody was wearing silver. Oh, and like the hair was moving on a couple of the things. It, it just, listen, we bring a lot. <laughs> we bring a lot to the table, okay? That is life. We bring a lot. And just the things that they're able to do with hair 
and you know and it doesn't always take taking it doesn't always take a lot of manipulation it doesn't always take you know taking our hair out of its natural state a lot of times it's using our hair just as it is not having to flatten it or blow dry like the versatility that is our hair is <laughs> second to none okay so it's just it's just amazing uh amazing the things that the artists and the the business owners and the stylists do at these shows and the creativity that is just whew, inspiring goodness you just think that it just can be jaw-dropping okay um but like i said the 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 uh, trade show is going to be virtual this year so you can experience all of these things this year like i said just go to brownerbrothers.com which will be linked down below where you can just click on the link and you can go ahead and register and you can be a part and visit the trade show virtually from home so not worrying about flights and dealing with people and hotel none of that do it from the comfort of your home i mean what better what better way to enjoy it from the comfort of your home? Pop you up some popcorn, get you some chips, and enjoy it, okay? Everything that I've mentioned, articles and things like that that I've read and stories will all be linked down below along with any of the pop-up videos that have happened here. Everything will be linked below. So I hope that you enjoyed this piece, piece of, black of black history, black history. Every, month. every month. And make sure you like this video, Press the subscribe button, which is red and right there. Punch the notification bell so that you can stay abreast of when I post my videos. And once again, thank you for tuning into Jermaine All Natural. And thank you to all of the new people that have found me, that have subscribed to me. Hopefully you find something on my channel that teaches you something, you learn something, you, you know, just get to see how things work and that you laugh along the way. So thank you for tuning into Jermaine All Natural and I will see you in my next video.